One-of-a-kind flagship showroom. Uh, would you ever be offering uh, uh, the uh, uh, was it uh, four models with anything after after a while? Or? We we do, although we don't do a lot of a lot of sales. Where we're more, uh -huh. um, we're not the typical furniture store where it's signs in the windows constantly sales. I don't like that look. That's not oh. kind of what what we promote. We do sell floor samples, and that's that's part of the process. Really, it's it's a lot of part of our business is the trades so like designers. Oh. That come in that's a big part of our business it probably will be uh -huh. up here as well oh, okay uh -huh. oh well the other question is uh, ergonomic uh, furniture I mean it, I mean it's uh, I go to a lot of shows and things yeah. and so I see things and you know uh, and there's some there's some furniture that's designed so that you can sit well in them for a long, long period of time if you have to and without wrecking anything uh, which is what ergonomics is. So I was just wondering if you have, I mean, if it's decor or is it stuff you can really live in? It, it is, but it's more sofas and beds. It's more household, not really task chairs, like uh, office chairs. Uh -huh. um, so we're more of, a, you know, we do mo mainly upholstery. Sofa pieces mm -hmm. are, are our biggest product. Um, I was just wondering, price-wise, uh, it, it's kind of the restoration hardware, so it's it's an upper end furniture furniture pieces. So that's why I said it's not serving the whole community. However, we want to service the community in that that sense. Yeah. Credit card and all that. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Yes, sir. You work with us in the community. Yeah, definitely. So like, yeah, no, I mean, it's we want to be involved. I mean, we're, we're opening in this area, you know, I'm, you know, when I grew up in the city, I didn't grow up here. I was, you know, in the edge of the, the marina, basically. But I, I always was you involved. Were, yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Way before that. Let me tell you, my parents got priced out of that when that all happened. Uh, and I grew up on Lombard Street, and not the good part. <laughs> so, yeah, I, 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 I get it. And, and we want to be involved. So definitely. Thank you. Do you have a layaway plan? No, we don't. We don't. Yeah. Yes. My name is George Dice. I'm an insurance agent, and I actually signed a foundation yep. at the South of our yes. association. Um, and I had a question for you. You know, there is a place called uh, Sofa Center or something up on Polk Street Building. You a custom sofa. And I haven't bought anything from them yet because I want to have like a sectional in the corner and of course it's like five six thousand bucks i'm like okay i'm gonna wait for a while on that but that that furniture is made in the united states i don't know where their factory is where is your furniture made or is there any one place where you try to buy it it's it, it's actually uh, built all overseas um we do we do source all of our accessories as much locally as we can so it's artwork from local artists it's um you know all the smaller accessories Unfortunately, the furniture market, kind of what we're competing with, we're competing with Italian manufacturers, and their price points are astronomical. Yep. And we're, a, even though it's expensive, it's still a bit more affordable than that. So we really, it's hard to make it in the U.S. Yep. at a price point that's competitive, unfortunately. And no one, there's no real manufacturers that manufacture that contemporary look in the U.S. Okay. And I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not big enough to, to do it myself. They chopped down all the good trees back, because I'm from Massachusetts, and yeah. I guess they chopped down all the good trees a few hundred years ago, and then moved down to North Carolina, and they chopped right. down all the good trees there. Exactly. So now, you know, I guess it's going to go to South America and chop the trees down there. Yeah. So but thanks, thanks for your question. One of the things we discussed at another board meeting about you guys is that, yeah, it might be expensive, but it's a big space, we want a full storefront with activity. We don't want empty storefront that they can't rent. And, you know, so so great. Uh, we're glad to have you get a certain plenty of condos sprouting up with the people who yeah. sign big money. Yeah. So thank you. Um, with the trend to seem to be in the city to build smaller um, rather than bigger, uh, as we're glancing through here, all your beds are cane and cane size. Um, thanks to Supervisor Wiener, we have 400 square foot housing units in the city we can build now. And a queen size bed, we would have been. Um, so I was wondering if, how would a person who may have a condo that's a thousand square feet, one bedroom, be able to fit a bit of bed like that in? And two, 
they're building smaller elevators. Now this is particularly where it is because in this building, if you could have anything bigger than a twin, it doesn't fit the elevator. Um, so it's something you need to be aware of is getting your bed, if you have a 10-story building, getting your bed from the ground floor upstairs. The other thing that we worry on here, I think is something that builders should be careful of, is bed bugs coming in from overseas in the furniture. And wood furniture is a great host for those. Well, I don't think it'll happen. Um, the potential is there. And bringing in other pests that are invasive to our, our society in this country. Because they are, it's already happening. We see it all the time. It's already happening. So do you have safeguards when you're bringing furniture in to try to keep out that stuff? Yep. Uh, in so first off, size-wise, we understand LA, everything is bigger. <laughs> yeah. So with, that's one of the things we definitely have identified and it's gonna be a much different story as far as scale of, of furniture pieces here. Uh, in regards to pests and everything, <coughs> the factory, our factory is um, one of uh, the leaders in, in the market, we're an FSC. We, we, you know, we source the wood. Wood mainly is American oak that we use, um, and it's all treated. Uh, we've been in the market, not my store. My store's only been open for about four years now in LA. But we've been in the, the market in the US for 13 years. There's a distribution facility in Seattle that distributes all over the US to different, different kind of multiple yeah. retail stores. Um, and one of the things, like with our factory, it's not, it's a completely clean facility. It's not, not a facility that um, things are built outside or anything like that. You know, they, they control things fairly, fairly highly because we, we don't want to have that, 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 those issues. You know, we, we stand behind our product. We have a 10-year warranty on it, so, so it is important to us. What's the, what's the likelihood that down the road you might, that you might have that store going, but you have another store going where prices are much less than those others, which where with the benefit you cannot ever afford. And also that was one, and also is uh, metal looks good too if, you, if it's nice and fashionable. Yeah. And uh, I'm not thinking that maybe he has some metal furniture type things for for SRO place. Where they have those issues with their bugs, that might that might take away that problem from those SROs. So therefore, you're looking out for the community in that respect, and also the uh, the, the, the furniture of the beds not being so gigantic, even though they're nice. Um, but they can't go to the 10th floor unless you want to walk that far. Who wants to do that? So um, it'd be nice. If, if, it, it, it's always a possibility. I mean, one of the, the the issues in the city, and you guys, I think you had set it off with the, the run retail space, is, is the cost. You know, the retail space is so expensive in the city that, you know, as myself, it's my, my business, I have to make, have to make money. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's part, part of the struggle, you know. I mean, that's one good thing where you do have spaces that can be, you know, that, that, that have subsidized rent. So that, and then there's always a possibility for something, something like that. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, we have one more agenda item and then we're gonna break the car. Yeah. Yeah. Good. We have food right now. Uh introduce your business. And you should like more than just cross I'm Stefano Castellato with SGC Strategic Communications. I'm with Daniel Padilla. Yeah. With uh, Ono Sushi, a new sushi place we're trying to open up across the street from uh, the Hilton Trituri Opero. Um, just to give you proximity to the location for those, um, there used to be a Nan and Curry, uh, and that carried both storefronts, and now what they did is they subdivided the two spaces. Uh, Halal Guys opened, and they're doing quite well. Um, Sushi Ono will go into 330 O'Farrell location, where Halal Guys is in the 340 um, thing. Um, unfortunately, they had a sushi place called Sushi Boat on Geary at Mason. 
you might know the International House of Wine used to be next door, and someone mentioned Lori's Diner around, wrapped around the corner. Um, all that, that building was bought, and they're gonna open up different concepts, so they're forced to relocate the sushi place. Fortunately, they're gonna have to scale it back because the space that they were leaving was about twice the space of the space that they're gonna go into at um, Oni, uh, about uh, 330 O'Farrell. The, um, it'll, st it'll seat about 36 people, and it will, we're also asking for um, a Type 41 license to be a bona fide restaurant, which would be beer and wine. And um, anything else you want to add? So, the, one of the issues we must have about the hours. Oh yeah, hours of operation. Um, we, because of the proximity, it's directly almost across from the Hilton. Um, not everybody works nine to five, so what we'll, we'll, our ask will be um, till midnight at night, seven days a week. Um, we think we can manage that very well and also offer somebody who may be arriving on a late flight if it's a tourist uh, an opportunity to get some, get a meal. Right. Saki covered under the 41 license. <laughs> <laughs> Any yes. Oh, it is, good. <laughs> Uh, any other comments? Do you have anyone? Um, well, I'll let you know. Yeah. Um, I protest, Stefan knows, I protest folks' licenses. And um, some of my concerns are um, safety of people exiting, even though it is across the building. Um, my, my biggest concern is people exiting, not paying attention to us on the sidewalk, particularly late at night. Uh, and so, um, if there's a way to remind people at the door to be aware of your surroundings, yes. because even if by the Hilton, by the Hilton, it's still a tenderloin, yes. and they may not be parked by the Hilton, um, so they have to be aware of their surroundings. Also, one of my other, my biggest concerns is. Um, over intoxicated people leaving um, and then getting behind the wheel of the car. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that you can, if you can work way to, if a person starting to show signs of intoxication, cut them off and not them. Yeah, we, we, we have a sushi board for uh, over 25 years and we didn't, we didn't even have one incident. Same thing with uh, Captain Mason. Captain Mason has been since 94. Uh, the sushi board was since 85. Unfortunately, we lost the lease, and we have to transfer some. Well, I mean, I understand, I understand all that part. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that I want to, when I do protests, um, and then I guess that wasn't true sure. uh, of um, I do, I like doing conditions that I like to see on the license. Because I, well, I, yes, we are oversaturated, we are a high crime area, but I want to try to make you a better restaurant or sure. a better bar or a better uh, liquor store with the conditions that uh, I have on there. So you have a better operation and the last one. Sure. Sure. Um, go ahead. Three, 330 O'Farrell. The cross street is Mason and Taylor. Um, it's across the street from the Hilton main entrance. Mm -hmm. The garage is next door, other than on the corner. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anybody else? <clears throat> well, what are your hours again? The hours are the hour, um, the hours of operation will be from 12 to 12. If we, 12 to 12. And we might was, not open until that, but we want to like to live for sure at the window. He said, who did you have? We'll make sure food will be served continuously. So while they're open, food will always be served. Hey, um, like well, more depending on how early you eat your breakfast. <laughs> no, well, so, well, you know, and pretty much lunch and dinner. And, and. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you very Thank much you. for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.